Last class we did two activities to review how crosslinks affect the environment, specifically crosslinked plastics. First you made a crosslink, which was the blue slime, and then you did a series of recycling code activities. I wanted to just quickly review how crosslinks were related to recycling as well as environmental issues. First of all, the recycling code tells you the type of plastic that it's made of. So anything with a 1 means it's made of polyethylene terephthalate. Anything with a 5, for example, means it's made of polypropylene. So the numbers tell you what type of plastic the item is made of. Based on the type of plastic it's made of, it will have different properties. So something like a water bottle, a 1 or a 2, is kind of flimsy. You can bend it, you can scrape it, you can flex it if you need to, you can crush it. As you move down, something like a 3 or 4 would be harder plastic, like a styrofoam cup or a medicine bottle. So I could kind of bend it, I could kind of flex it if I needed to, but it would be a lot more difficult. As you move down the list into the 5, 6, and 7s, they're really, really hard to the point where you would get to a 7, which would have the most cross links, which could be like a tire or a bulletproof vest. So the properties change because the cross links are changing. So the 1s have the least amount of cross links. That's why they're the easiest to recycle. Anything with a 7 has the most cross links. That's why they're the most difficult to recycle. So it's the cross links that determine how easily something can be recycled or not.